So we are talking sweeteners. This is part two of a two-part series. And today we are going to get to the good stuff from okay to the absolute best sweeteners for your health. Join me. So hey there, this is Lindy Ford, registered dietitian, clinical and functional nutritionist and nutrition detective. So please subscribe to this channel and join the fun. You are not going to want to miss any of these videos. They're all going to benefit you. And also like this video if you do and follow me on every single social media that you can think of. Facebook, Lindy Ford Nutrition and Wellness, Instagram, LinkedIn, all of those. And you will be benefited by that as well. Now in the last video, um, I covered sweeteners and some were completely, completely unacceptable to somewhat acceptable and I am continuing today to go down the list and it's going to be like okay or good to the absolute best and at the end I am going to give you some of my favorite sweeteners that you can use and this is how we're going to break it down so we just make it really organized in your thought processes processes but you're going to want to get paper and pen just to write some notes so we're going to tell you how it's derived where it's coming from the percent of fructose, because a lot of times we only think of the glycemic index, which I'm going to give you as well, but fructose is really important because there are some issues with fructose, and I'm going to link a link below to let you know what those issues are. Um, we also are going to cover the sweetness compared to sucrose, which is table sugar. If it's blood sugar or keto friendly. Also number six, is it okay for baking? And what is the conversion cup for cup and baking? That's an important point. And what is the price and different brands and types? So the last time we left off with number five, which is honey. Now we're going to number six, which is coconut palm sugar or coconut sugar. Sugar. Now it is made from the sap of the coconut palm tree and then it's dehydrated and made into more of like crystals. There are a trace amount of minerals and antioxidants and it has the same calories as sugar. The fructose in coconut sugar is about 20 to 30 percent and the glycemic index is 35 to 54 depending on the batch. Blood sugar friendly, not really. It's really, it's better than sugar. Okay, it's better than sucrose and you can use it, but just use it very, very sparingly. It is a one cup to one cup uh, baking ratio. You can use it in baking and the price is about five to $10 a pound. So number seven is maple syrup. And this is just just what we all know. It's the sap from the maple tree and most of it, I don't know if you realize this, but most of it is coming now from Canada. Fructose is about 25%. The glycemic index is about 54. So its profile is this, uh, comparatively the same as coconut palm sugar, but it's different in the fact that it has more nutrients. It really has a considerable and decent amount of minerals like potassium and calcium and zinc, manganese and iron and antioxidants. The sweetness is about the same as sugar and it is not blood sugar friendly. But if you use small amounts like I do, I don't use it in anything but like sauces and just when I need a tiny bit of sweetness in something, I'll use maple syrup. And my little girl does use it on her pancakes, her, her uh, gluten-free pancakes on Saturday morning. So we do use it. Baking, yes, but it's a liquid. It is not a granule, it's not in granular form. So it's about two thirds to three quarters cup of maple syrup to one cup of sugar. Now there are different ways that you can get it. The grades are A and B with um, A being light amber, medium amber, and dark amber. And then you could go to B, which is the darkest, but it is going to give you a, a very, um, has a much more strong maple flavor in it. Organic is always best. Number eight is stevia. Stevia is made from the leaves of the stevia rabadina plant. Fructose is zero. 
the glycemic index is zero and the sweetness is 200 to 300 times that of sucrose. It is blood sugar and keto friendly, but baking with stevia is tricky. You can do it, but I don't think it bakes well. It doesn't caramelize. It's, um, it's just, I don't think it's a great baking product unless it's mixed with other things. It's about one third cup of stevia to one cup of sugar because it's so much sweeter. It's priced pretty, it's like 20 to $40 a pound, but just remember you're not gonna be using as much. Now, I know stevia is a non-GMO plant, so you don't really have to worry about that so much, but organic is best. There's um, sweet leaf stevia, there's, there's, different, there's different brands of it, and that has inulin in it, new naturals, Pure, P-Y-U-R-E, Stevita, Sweet Leaf. There's all kinds of different types of whole stevia. But what you may actually come across are a blend. Now, stevia, the biggest problem that I have with it is that aftertaste. I have never found one not in a blend that doesn't have that aftertaste. And normally these blends, the very first ingredient is urethritol, which we are going to talk about. So um, a lot of people think that Truvia is stevia, but it really isn't. It's more urethritol than it is stevia. It's a product made by Cargill, and, it, and they were actually forced to settle a class action lawsuit because they were saying that this was a natural product, but it actually was a they were using GMO maltodextrin in this product. So it, it's with the erythritol part of it. The stevia part was okay, but it was the erythritol that was the problem. So right now, if you can if you can tell me below, if you know, I don't know if Truvia still has that in it. As of like four years ago, it did. I could not find anything in the literature to say that they cleaned up their act and it doesn't have that in it anymore. But I would stay away from Truvia because of the GMO, if it still has that in there, the GMO component of it. But there's other, and, and with these kind of blends, they don't use the whole stevia leaf. What they use is the sweetest compound of stevia, and that's called Rebiana or Reb A. So they're always going to use that Reb A with something else, like Nat Natvia is urethritol and stevia, and Pure has an organic stevia blend that has urethritol in it, and Lakanto does as well. And sometimes stevia is put with monk fruit or other types of sweetener. So so number nine is chicory root extract. I bet you didn't think of that one. Anyway, what is chicory root? So it's a soluble dietary fiber from the chicory plant. It's not the kind, it's not the piece of the plant that's made into to coffee. That's roasted and, and made into like a coffee type product. This is the, um, this is the fiber. It's called a fructo oligo or Inulin. It's a prebiotic fiber that is amazing for your gut health. It helps to normalize gut flora. But the problem with it may be that when people don't have really great gut health, they can have problems with chicory root. It has 0% fructose and the GI is at zero. The sweetness is, is only about 35%. It is keto, blood sugar friendly. You can bake with it, but you have to use a lot more of it when you're baking. So you need to use a, a, like a cup and a third to one cup. The price per pound is about 15 to $18. There are different ways that you can get chicory root extract, and you can get it in a liquid form. Um, there is a brand called Good Balance or Liquid, I think it's called Good Balance Liquid Sweetener. And the one that has the most inulin though is actually the dried form or the granulated form, and that is called Just Like Sugar. Now, I've used that and it's a very good sweetener. It's not very sweet, but it's a good sweetener, but it's hard to get. I don't know if the company is going under. I'm not sure what's happening. If you know what's happening to Just Like Sugar, please comment below. Number 10 is monk fruit extract. So here's the deal. It is actually, it actually comes from the monk fruit or what we call lohan, the lohan uh, fruit that is grown in Southeast Asia. Now, you're actually not getting any, this is what's so amazing about this product, you're not getting any of the sweetness from the fruit. You're actually getting the sweetness from unique antioxidants called magricides. So th that's what's giving it the sweetness. 
Um, it could have an aftertaste. It just depends on the brand. So you have to try different brands to see which one you like better. It really doesn't cause any bloating or gut issues like chicory root. It has 0% fructose and the glycemic index is zero. The sweetness is about 100 to 200 percent or 200 times uh, sweeter than, than sucrose depending on the brand. In the mogricides it has um, they are like antioxidants so they can also have anti-inflammatory properties that is good for your gut so they really help with inflammation of the gut some animal studies, not human, but animal studies show that this, these antioxidants can also inhibit cancer cell growth. There's one called uh, monk sweet, with this, it, which is urethritol, stevia, and monk fruit. And then there's one that Lakanto makes for baking, which is which has kind of the best of both, all the worlds. And it has urethritol, it has the chicory root, and it has monk fruit. Number 11 is something called sugar alcohols. Now what in the world is a sugar alcohol? So these are compounds that are derived actually from sugar and, and they're found naturally in some fruits and vegetables. Now I'm going to name most of them. I'm not going to name all of them but the most popular ones and I'm going to say this percentage of sweetness compared to sucrose. Number one is sorbitol which is at 60 percent. Then we have mannitol which is 60 percent. Number three is maltitol which is 60 percent. Urethritol 70 percent and xyl xylitol is about the same as sugar, so about 100%. And the xylitol is the one that is commonly put into gum. None of the sugar alcohols cause any kind of tooth decay, but that xylitol one has a, this cool minty taste, so it, it lends itself perfectly to most gums. Now, they're very interesting because they look like they have some carbs in them, carbohydrates. But actually, most of their carbohydrates don't get absorbed. Most of the sugar alcohols don't get absorbed in the body. But because of that, there are certain ones that can cause some GI distress. I can tell you that sorbitol is the one that causes me the most problems. I can't even eat sorbitol. I tried one time in some gummies and thought, I was going to die. I thought you could stick a pin in me and I was going to float across the room. So some of them may, you may have problems. What I have found in my favorite one, and I'll tell you what that is in a minute, is that if you start slow, your body really does get used to sugar alcohols. The, G, the glycemic index is at a zero. There's no fructose. And um, even though you have to know that sometimes when urethritol or one of the sugar alcohols is shown in a product, it will, it will list more carbs than are, than are absorbed into your body. So it is definitely, they are all definitely blood sugar and keto friendly. And I like them a whole lot. They're probably my favorite sweeteners, but I, I can tell you that I really like sweetening blends as well. I want to talk just about urethritol today. It is the most resistant to the digestive process. So most of it just gets, you know, gets, uh, goes right through your GI and does not get absorbed. The price for urethritol by itself, now you always, this is really important, this is the problem with Truvia, okay? You always want to buy a non-GMO or an organic urethritol and it ranges from about eight to ten dollars a pound. Like a brand like Now or Wholesome are really good. But there are some wonderful blends out there. I already mentioned, I've already mentioned several of them, but like Lakanto makes a urethritol monk fruit blend that's about $12 a pound. But of course, many of you already know my favorite and the one I use every single day. I just think it's a really good tasting sweetener. And that's another thing, the reason I like it is because I don't taste any aftertaste like I taste with many of the Stevia products and sometimes some of the monk fruit products. Just don't taste that. I just don't like that aftertaste of some of these products. And my favorite one is going to be Swerve. It's non-GMO, it has some prebiotic fiber in it, and it's about, you know, you look for sales, but it's about $10, nine, $10 a pound, maybe less, if you can find it on sale. And you can even find it, you can find it in your grocery stores now, and even Walmart carries it. So I love Swerve. So thank you so much for joining me today. 
and I hope this cleared sweeteners up for you. Remember, you know, just try to enjoy less of the sweet taste in your foods. You're going to be healthier, but these may help you out to get real sugar out of your diet. Many of these good ones that we talked about today. So I'm hoping that that really helps you. And remember that everyone, every single one of you deserves the freedom of their best life. I will see you in the next video.